Well, good morning, everyone. I made it to Vancouver Island, and I am with a, a lady who's becoming a really good friend very quickly. I'm Zia, and I make videos about full-time van life. This is Adelina. She has a YouTube channel. I've mentioned it to you before. And her YouTube channel is My Big Tiny House Life. So please, yes, and this is the tiny house which is in the process of being moved, unfortunately, having been just moved a few months ago. So Adelina um, has graciously let me stay here for a night and fed me well. And now we're going to do a tour of her no-build van build. So uh, enjoy. You all know what it says, you are my sunshine. So tell us about your van, Adelina. Well, this van is a 3500 Ram Promaster, Dodge Ram Promaster, um, and it I bought it in 2021 during the pandemic when you could not find a van for, uh, you, you know, you could sell your kidney and you still couldn't find a van, but I did manage to find one. It was a fleet vehicle from a tire shop, and uh, as soon as I saw it, I bought it. It was totally empty. There was a metal bulkhead here that I took down, but I knew that I wanted to build it out, but I, I don't have carpentry, carpentry skills. And I also didn't want to spend a ton of money because I'm not going to live in my van, at least not yet, maybe someday down the road. Um, but I wanted it to be comfortable because I always joke that I'm built for comfort, not for roughing it. So I wanted it to have everything that I would need to spend even a months in it at a time, but not cost a lot and not be hard to do. And you know, I think I, I came up with some interesting ideas and I actually filmed it all for my channel because I figured I've never done this before and if I can do it, then that means that anybody can do it because you can learn anything on the YouTubes, which is what I did. So I'm gonna just show you around my, my van. So you can see from Adelina being inside there how much space she has. How long is it? It's a 159 wheelbase. And yeah, there's plenty of height. I'm 5'4", and you know, if you were even, mm, my oldest son is 5'11", and he stands in here no problem. Yeah. So one of the reasons that I wanted a Ram uh, Promaster van is because I wanted to sleep widthwise, not lengthwise. And when I, <laughs> I went into a Ford dealership to look at a transit and I laid down in the back of this empty van and the salesperson thought I was nuts but I realized that I wouldn't be I it would it would be a little tight for me once I got everything in to the van uh, and the, the sprinters for sure I wouldn't be able to sleep with wise even at my height so that's why I went with the, the Promaster which is the biggest of the cargo vans and so uh, that's one of the reasons that I went with the the Promaster. I also wanted to have uh, the 159 wheelbase because it wasn't an extended, but it was long enough to fit in a regular parking spot. Uh, but she's a big girl and she's a little bit harder to park than a smaller van for sure. So one of the first things I did in the van was, uh, I can't remember if it was to cut the opening for the Max Air fan um, or if it was to install the swivel seat. So I got a swivel seat from Scopama, I think is the name of the brand. Um, and it was, it was a bugger to install, like everything, you, it looks easy on the YouTube channel, uh, videos that you watch, but because I had to disconnect the airbags when I installed the, the seat, that was a little scary. So you have to disconnect the battery so they don't go off accidentally and then disconnect them. But it actually went in and it's fantastic because it really in, um, just opens up this space when you're parked and you want to just sort of sit and relax. I often sit here when I'm doing my work on my laptop and I, I you move this forward so I can turn it and put my feet up here and sometimes have my breakfast on my little lap desk or do my, my work. So, you know, installing this was a really uh, good investment, but it is a little high. So often I have my cooler underneath here and that's what I put my feet up on because I don't have a fridge in my van. So. The next, I think I installed this first, and then the next thing I installed was the Max Air fan. Now, I had never cut a hole, a hole in a perfectly watertight <laughs> uh, vehicle before, and that was really intimidating, but I figured if it's been done before, that means that I can do it if I learn how, and I did my research, and uh, it worked out actually really well. Now, I don't have um, 
power yet to, to the van, like a, an electrical system, a solar or anything like that. So the, van, the fan isn't connected. So I just open this up as a vent and have my slider windows open to create some cross breeze. Um, the next project, and that was supposed to be this summer, but now I have to move so the funds are going elsewhere. But the, the, the next project is to install a solar panel on the roof so that I can have this wired up so it can work as a fan. But even as a vent, it's pretty awesome. So as I said earlier, I am not a carpenter, but I wanted to have some overhead storage, more than what is over the cab. And there's a lot of storage in the storage space over the cab. I have my um, front blinds, uh, blackout blinds. I keep my, this is a netting for the side door that I made just from a couple of those uh, screens that you can get for your patio doors. A lot of storage here, but I wanted storage for food. And I won't take credit for this idea. I saw it on uh, a YouTube video or Instagram or something like that, where somebody had taken pet carriers. You can actually buy these from van conversion places. And for uh, one that's about this long, it was like six, $700. And I said, nope, not gonna happen. So then I saw this video and I thought, that is brilliant. So they're just pet carriers. And what I've done is there's a little ledge here in the framing of the van. So the back is sitting on that. They're zip tied in. And now I can open it up and I can have my snacks. I will put my cereal bread snacks on one side. And then on the other side, I will put rice and pasta, things like that. I don't put super heavy things in there because I have other places to put tins and stuff. But this storage has been so useful and it was really inexpensive. I think each one of these was like $35, $39 Canadian. Um, so not expensive. They can be taken off and used for pet carriers if that's what you want. But I really love this. Um, I didn't, I haven't put walls in the van. I did insulate with, um, this is that 3M batting. I can't remember what it's called. Um, and then I've used the foam insulating boards on the ceiling that I've just sprayed adhesive on. Uh, because I don't know how I want this to be ultimately. And before I invest a bunch of money in actually building it out, if I ever do, uh, I wanted to live in it for a while and get a feel for it. And so that's been plenty. And I just hung this little blankier throw on there and it's, it's been fine. Um, so I wanted some extra seating other than the seat that swivels. And when I had company, I didn't want to have people sitting on my bed per se. So I got this little settee from Ikea, actually, from the garden department. It was really inexpensive. And then I put an extra, that's what it looks like. There's no real padding. So it came with a little pad. So I bought, I found this, um, it's for a lounger, a cushion for a lounger that I put on there. And then a blankie. And I've actually tacked the blankie in so that it stays put. Uh, and so now this is my lounging area. I have had a nap here uh, and it's really quite comfortable and it allows me to have a little storage underneath. I have a storage bin under here that I keep extra clothes, especially when it's and bedding, an extra set of sheets, towels, things like that. And it fits under there really well um, and you don't even see it and it doesn't slide around. This is all bungeed in with the, uh, the black rubber bungees versus the stretchy ones that I use elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's not going anywhere. Um, and then to have my clothes, I just got one of these metal wire drawer units from, I think it was JISC, may have been Walmart. Again, not expensive. And this is what I put my clothes in. And uh, it works really well. There's a lot of storage in here. It's also bungeed down. And then I have my little a crate that I got at Ikea. My Jackery fits in here with a little bungee to hold it still. Is that a Jackery 250? That's a Jackery 150. 150? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's not the only uh, power bank I have, but it's the one I use up here. And then uh, the, the plant is Velcroed on. It's not real, but it's Velcroed on. Um, and it's perfect little bedside table and storage unit. Um, and I keep a little light here that I can for like bed bedtime um, and you'll see that I have these 
battery or uh, USB lights that I got from Amazon and they, they take like, I don't know, a couple watts, not a lot of energy. So when I'm in here and I want a lot of light, I will put those on. I also got these strip lights, four of these, and they come with a little, uh, a little remote to turn on and off to make brighter really handy um, and they're magnetic but I have velcroed some on because the magnets sometimes when I go over really bumpy stuff do come apart I have these little string lights for ambiance when I just want to read in bed or actually scroll <laughs> TikTok in bed not read uh, and I turn those on when I need that and I just have lots of little battery operated lights for just in case but I find that I don't use these that often. I also have, you know, these that I got from Canadian Tire that magnet on and are really handy to have. But really, lighting isn't an issue. It, if I'm not plugged in somewhere and I can't plug in a light, I have plenty of lighting in here. Um, and it's quite comfortable. So one of the things I wanted in the van was a heater. But I didn't want a diesel heater because the van is gasoline powered and I didn't want to have to have a second tank with diesel heat in it. So I was able to find a heater that would work on gasoline. I had it professionally installed because anything that would uh, could blow up and kill me, I wasn't going to try doing myself. So uh, I knew that if I did the windows wrong and they dripped, that wasn't going to kill me. It was going to annoy me, but it wasn't going to kill me. So I had this professionally installed and it taps right into the van's uh, fuel tank, which is awesome, and into the ba van's uh, battery right now. But eventually I'll have it switched over to to tap into a house battery once I get one. Um, and it sits under here. And one of the reasons this sits so high is because the heater is underneath there. And I got, this is a little lap desk that the legs fold out from Ikea and it sits right over top of the heater, doesn't touch it. And it allows me to have the heater there. It vents, uh, gets fresh air from back here. And then the vent is right here. I haven't, again, permanently mounted this vent uh, on anything, any cabinet, because I don't have a cabinet, but it sits right there and it pumps out a lot of heat. It's really a fantastic little unit and the controller for it is right here by the bed so I can reach it from the bed. The one um, complaint I have about it is that's a really pathetic little controller. It's not like these, these fancy ones that are, like this wasn't cheap, but it wasn't, um, I had originally bought one from Amazon these Chinese knockoff ones that run on diesel and I was gonna install that uh, and then I decided to send it back because it was diesel and I was worried about it because what happens if something goes wrong and I ended up buying this one and from a company called Polar Mobility in Calgary and they do have offices in British Columbia as well um, and they install these things in uh, transport trucks in sailboats and in vans and, but the, the one thing is the display is not, it's not very uh, impressive, which is really a very small thing. So I love my heater and that was a really good purchase. One of the things I wanted to add in was the ability to be plugged into shore power. So I ordered a plug off of Amazon that I'd seen multiple van uh, dwellers use and it was really easy to install it. You basically cut a hole in your van, another hole in your van. Uh, but what it gave me the ability to do was put in this power bar and this is a surge protector power ball, bar and I did invest in a decent one. But when I'm plugged into shore power, I can plug in, uh, I've got a little clip on light I can plug in. I can plug in my rice cooker, uh, my space heater if I don't want to use the gas heater. Just having something like this is really useful and it has USB um, charging ports as well as plug-ins. So um, again, not an expensive thing to do and something that you can easily do yourself, but it gives you the ability to have shore power without a lot of fuss. And I'll just show you uh, one last thing. I, ha I have another uh, heavier duty uh, battery bank. I think this is 650. And so for, uh, as an accompaniment to the Jackery, which is just a 150, I have this big heavy duty one that um, I can use. And 
Um, I've never actually run either one of these down. And Even what, what brand phone. is that? It's right? called Ninja Bat. Okay. And uh, I mean, I would love another Jackery or a Blue Eddy or something like that, but I found this well recommended on Amazon so I ordered it and I've been very happy with it even when the power's gone out in the house I've plugged in my modem into this so I can continue to work uh, and it's been awesome um, and both of these can be charged with the cigarette lighter port 12 volt port uh, as you're driving so they don't take long to charge uh, on in the house but you can also charge them when you're driving so having two I think is useful especially given that this one is so little but I don't have to have this one out on the counter. When it comes to cooking in the van I, I knew that I wanted to have a dedicated workspace, kitchen space um, and so I bought this unit from Ikea. I think it's called Sinestra. When I bought it it was like $180 Canadian. Best thing I ever bought for the van. I, I'll say that about a bunch of things. <laughs> the light, the fan, the swivel seat, the heater. Best thing I ever bought for the van. But this is probably one of the least expensive best things I ever bought for the van. Uh, it comes with these little shelves that you can put on and slide around and these bins. Uh, it's fantastic. I love the stainless steel top. It came with a built-in sink, which was great. Um, and so, and with the hole for the plumbing already drilled really fit in here perfectly. Again, I have it bungeed to the framing of the van with those black rubber bungee straps. So it's in here nice and secure. And I don't have it set up now because I've been using the van to move things for the house move. Um, and so all of the jugs and stuff are actually in storage. But normally I would have a the gray water jug here that just the sink would drain directly into with a funnel. And then in that basket over there would be the freshwater jug. And it's one of those, one of those blue jugs that you can buy at Canadian Tire or any place like that. And what I use for a tap is this little USB rechargeable tap. It's meant to go on those great big water jugs that you get. Uh, and it's fantastic. Still runs. <laughs> There's still a little water in the line. Uh, and it, it's been sitting there all winter. I haven't charged it. And so it just sits here. And so I have running water without having to worry about plumbing, leaking, freezing in the winter or anything like that. It's been fantastic. So my little kitchen area is so functional. I love that when the doors open, I can see out. I normally keep this above the uh, cab, but when I'm parked somewhere, I store it here. It's my butane stove. so. When I'm cooking, that's upside down. When I'm cooking, I just pull this out and set it here and then do my cooking. And away you go. Underneath here, I found some really cool things. Uh, when I'm traveling, I bungee it in, but it, this is a little trolley that's meant for bathrooms. This is from Ikea as well. And it's meant to go in your bathroom, but it's perfect right there. And I, this is where I put my cans and my oils and things like that uh, for when I am traveling. I just keep some spices in here. Uh, and it's a great little space saver, really useful. And then my drawer unit, I made sure to get one that had little locks so the drawers don't pop open. The bottom one does sometimes when I go over a bump, so I make sure the bungee's going across here. But I keep my pots in, in, in this. And I went to the uh, camper store and I got one of these um, woods pot sets that's got a detachable handle so it takes up a lot less room. Everything in here is collapsible. I've got uh, two kettles but one of which is this. Now it's really cool but I will admit it's kind of freaks me out to use so I don't actually use this very much. I use it mostly just to hold water. To, but, um, and then just the little things that a person needs, even down to one of these little choppers that you pull the string and it chops. Have I used it? No, but it's pretty cool in here. I got to admit. Um, and so I find that um, everything that I need is in here. And this little drawer unit is perfect for, um, for travel because it locks um, and that's really useful. When I am in the van for uh, travel, for camping, I will keep my, I've got my hot water bottle in here. I will keep a little uh, mini dash rice cooker 
in here uh, because when I'm plugged in, I can use that. This is just a, a really cool little uh, storage unit and it's from Ikea as well and it's meant for recycling, you know, for your recycling cans and stuff, center. But yeah, so that is my kitchen setup. Let me just put this away. So I have a little garbage can here for my garbage and it's bungeed in. Um, and then, you know, basically I just throw out my garbage at a gas station, anything like that, because it's just one small little bag. Mm -hmm. When it comes to cans and stuff for recycling, I usually will drop those off in bins as well, because mostly when you go to grocery stores or anything like that, they'll have a garbage can, they'll have a place for your refundables and stuff like that. Um, I don't necessarily recycle my cans, my food cans when I'm traveling. Um, because there's no place to store them until I can get to facilities, which isn't optimal, but it is just is the reality. So for my bed, it was really important to me that I have a comfortable bed. One of the things I'm not sure about, or wasn't when I was first fitting this out, was whether or not when I decided on a permanent layout, I would want a permanent bed setup, or I would want a setup where you folded it down to make a table and some benches. I thought I would want a permanent bed. I wanted something that was easy for me to install. So what I did was I bought these rails from Ikea and then the slat system because as Zia said when we were doing her van tour, uh, it's really important to have air circulation under the mattress. The last thing you want is any kind of moisture building up in there and mold or anything like that. So the slats give me all sorts of air circulation. I got this memory foam mattress from JISC. And I basically just zip tied the slats to the frames. And what most people don't know is if you buy this, the rails, these rails from Ikea, you can get the brackets for free from them. You just go to the parts department. And so I've got three rails and two sets of those slats because this is a double sized bed. And I mounted, bolted the brackets to the frame of the van and then the the slats just or the rails just sort of clip on so the bed is very comfortable it's a little high but I wanted a lot of storage space under there but it still gives me tons of room to sit up I just step on this little table here to get up here there's lots of room for me to sit up in bed um, and it's really comfortable there's lots of leg room when I lay down uh, and I find that this bed is just as comfortable as the bed I have in my house and I absolutely love it so this was a good idea and I'm pretty set on always having a permanent uh, bed set up in the van um, and then another thing that I did that scared the heck out of me was cut the openings for these slider windows and there's a great story that I won't get into now but it, and when I say great I'm using air quotes it was very frustrating at first to do this but uh, I prevailed with some help from my father-in-law and we solved the problem and so now I have two slider windows which is awesome because when I am um, sleeping at night I can have these open and have some great air circulation through here um, and which is really awesome above here is just that same foam board insulation but I put this throw here with magnets just to make it look a little nicer and uh, yeah, I have this, this little fan has been fantastic. It's a USB rechargeable fan. I saw it on a bunch of Van Lifers channels. And again, it's been sitting here since last summer, the last time I took the van out camping. And I tried it today and it's still, where am I? Oh, it did work. <laughs> You used the last of the energy. I used the last of the juice just now. That's so funny because it mm. worked. So I'll take it in the house and recharge it. But it does last a long time. It has different speeds and you can angle it. So I get a lot of air circulation in here, even though the Max Air fan isn't like powered yet for a fan. Um, and I don't find that I have any problems with it being stuffy in here at all. It's really quite nice. So just have a little basket here with a book and I can turn this on when I'm reading at night when I want just a little light for reading um, yeah so then the last piece and I'm not gonna open up the back doors but is this um, I've got one of these blackout curtains it's the same one that's behind the cab 
to use uh, at night when I want black oak. And I've got it on a rod here that's just sort of set in the openings. Uh, and then I, I got this blanket from Canadian Tire, which I really love the color of. As you can see, it matches. And mm -hmm. so I sewed it onto the top to give it, to make it look prettier, but also to give it more insulation when it's cold, because no matter how much uh, ceiling you have around your doors, you're always gonna get a breeze in the doors at the back. And so this keeps that from happening and keeps things really nice and cozy. These little things are not actually curtains. They're meant to go on those Sinestra systems or other rail systems at Ikea. But when I saw them, I thought, this is brilliant. They're perfect for the, the size that I need here. They snap on, they have these little pouches. So I keep my USB chargers, I keep all sorts of stuff in them. And then when I want, you know, at night, I just close them. And they're just on a bungee uh, cord. Again, no build right now. Um, and they're perfect. And I just built myself some little shades for the back windows that are reflectix or black, depending on what I want to do. If I want to reflect the sun out or just have it dark at night. So the only other thing is this, when I was trying to think about overhead storage and I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with the pet carriers or something else. I ordered both the pet carriers and this from Amazon. This is a, a storage unit that goes behind the seats in a van to store stuff. And I decided that I actually preferred this here versus a pet carriers because it doesn't stick out as far. And there's like, I use this for my socks and underwear and things like that. Whereas I use the drawer unit for jeans and such. But so much room in here. You can fit t-shirts in here, socks and underwear, so much in here, and it, it doesn't take up a lot of visual space. Um, and again, I just bungeed that into the frame of the van. Uh, it actually has a, uh, a strap here with Velcro as well, so it's nice and secure. It carries a lot, and it didn't, uh, it didn't cost a whole lot. One of the things that I think is, is uh, I'm proud of stuff is the fact that the build out, and I'm using air quotes for build, didn't cost a whole lot. Now, what was expensive? The Scopama swivel seat, that was an investment. The Max Air fan was an investment. And the heater was definitely uh, the most expensive part of all of this. But everything else was not expensive. And I think that we are so used to seeing these beautifully built out vans that are obviously a huge investment and I think that that holds people back from just getting in and going but man you can find these little like that kitchen unit and that settee and you can build this out for not a whole lot and in fact use stuff that you may have in your house you probably have a plastic drawer unit or a little wire drawer unit that you're not using um, and next thing you know you've got a very comfortable um, and very easy to renovate when you do decide what you want to do if you decide to do something permanent uh, setup. And you know what? I probably will leave lists like this for a long time because I'm just a weekend warrior in it. But if I were going to live in it, then at least now I know what the layout is that I would want. Um, it would probably still look exactly like this just with finished walls and that would be about it. So thanks for for uh, letting me show you around my uh, part-time tiny, tiny house on wheels. Thank you, Adelina. I have one question for you, sure. which is on everybody's mind. Okay. And that is, is there a bathroom option? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, so uh, I, I'm not going to show it to you because again, I've got so much in storage. I have one of those emergency little ones where the legs flip out and you can put uh, one of those heavy duty bags in. And I keep... Uh, because for my cat, I use walnut shell cat litter. And I always keep a bag of that uh, in the van as well. And that's, that's for emergencies. I have never used it yet. What I normally use, and which may be too much information, but we're all friends here, is I mm -hmm. use a Shiwi <laughs> and a Gatorade bottle for those emergencies at night when I have to go and I can't get out. But otherwise, I use public washrooms, outhouses, gas stations, 
grocery stores, everywhere you go has a washroom. I've never had uh, an issue with that. Um, you know, like I say, if I have to pee in the middle of the night, that's what I'll use. I've gotten quite good at it. Uh, or just I... practice first <laughs> in the shower that... because I did not. <laughs> Practice in the shower first, or if you're camping, you know, outside. Like, go outside. Uh, it, yeah, you, there's a there's a trick to it, but again, you can learn anything on YouTube, right? You, there's there's videos on how to use those suckers, and once you get <laughs> once you learn how, they're really actually very cool, very easy to use. Uh, so that's it. I mean, I don't have a shower in here. I don't even have. Uh, uh, a shower bag or anything like that if I were in that van long term I might do a solar shower or something like that um, I know that the cat cat van lady or cat lady van Emmy she's got one that she plops into a bucket that's USB powered that could be useful but and if I were in here full-time I would probably put in a toilet uh, compost toilet like the separate like I have in my house um, and just have it under the the bed on little sliders that I could pull out because I think if you know I might want something then but because I'm not in it full time I didn't want to invest in anything like that for the van but yeah everybody you're right everybody wants to know <laughs> yeah. how do you go to the bathroom <laughs> so I think uh, you probably were all as impressed as I was at some of the very clever ideas that Adelina has in this van. It is so comfy, especially with the little sofa, and this bed is just to dream of, right? And to dream in, to so, dream in, and yeah. to dream in, yeah. You've got to check out her channel. Uh, I'll, I'll put it on here. And um, because she has the most beautiful tiny home that she had custom built for herself, which she's in the process of moving, but there is a tour on there as well, and another tour of the van, and how she put in, uh, cut the hole in the roof and <laughs> for the windows. So yeah. um, do check it out because uh, she has a wonderful, very informative uh, YouTube channel that I think you'll really love. So. Thanks so much, Adelina. You're welcome. Thanks for visiting. Okay. We, just to say, like, Z and I have been uh, online friends for a while, and this is the first time we've gotten to meet, and I would say uh, we got out of, on, like, a house on fire, so it won't yeah. be the last time that we are in person um, having lots of chats. Yes. Yeah, I agree completely. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'll come back in a minute and say my usual goodbye. I hope you all enjoyed that video of Adelina's van. I thought she had some brilliant ideas. And I thought it was a wonderful, cozy space. Uh, if you're thinking of doing van life and you don't have a lot of money to put into a van bill, that's the way to go. Um, I, w I might try and implement some of those ideas into my place. For example, uh, replace the faucet. I don't use the water tank. Get one of those little USB faucets and uh, have the sink directly drain into a jug that I can empty and uh, put a water bottle under there that I can siphon from. Let me know if you uh, think you're going to implement any of those. And please be sure to check out her channel. It's really a great channel to watch. I'm just going to wish you, because this has been a very long video, a wonderful day and I'll say bye bye for now.